Hickok 45 here. Yes, we're going to look at the difference between a $400 hunting rifle and a $2,000 hunting rifle. Is there really a difference that matters? <laughs> Let's put it that way. Well, let's just shoot the $400 hunting rifle. Now, it has a scope on it, so that makes it a little more expensive, but we'll talk about that, okay? Basically, the rifle without the scope is about $400. Bucks. Ruger American. Let's see if it'll shoot. Oh boy, hit that steel. Hit that two later. Let's uh, da, 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 let's try red plate in the middle. Ooh, it did. How about uh, another? Oh, a bowling pin. <laughs> yep, it works. If you've ever had an American Ruger American, you know anybody who has one. You know they tend to work, don't they? Good shooters. Now let's try a Seiko Bavarian. It's in 270. That one was in 308. This is in 270. It's the Seiko Model 85 Bavarian. And they run about $2,000. So, let's see if it'll shoot. Uh, it had better, huh? Oh, that plate is still moving. Let's see if we can pop it again. <laughs> we did. Woohoo! That's the one on the right. We got to get a two liter with this thing, too. <laughs> we have another round than this that holds five. That's why it costs more. Five rounds versus four. That'll that'll cost you a thousand at least every time, right? <laughs> hey, a 270 works. Have you noticed that? Yeah, we're going to we're going to talk a little bit about the difference and uh, and why you really want to pay two thousand instead of four hundred or five hundred. <laughs> And don't forget Sonoran Desert Institute, sdi.edu. You can get certified in gunsmithing, okay? Study firearms technology, start a new career, okay? Appreciate it. Um, so we appreciate all the help we get from those people. And uh, you people, most of you are people, I think, right? Yeah, probably. At least as much people as I am. So, all right, here we go. First disclaimer now. Let's keep down the class envy as much as possible. I know, I know, I know. It's really tempting to find a million reasons why you don't need a $2,000 rifle because it's no better than that one and you're just paying for the name and we can all rationalize that kind of stuff. I do it every day and tell people I don't have a Mercedes because I'm not going to just pay for the name or I'd be driving a Mercedes all the time or even a Rolls Royce. I don't want to just pay for the name. <laughs> Well, there's some truth in that, though, isn't there? I'm giving you a hard time, but there is some truth in that. Sometimes we pay, well, we're always paying for the name. The name is how the reputation is established, just like you individually, me individually. Our name should mean something. If the name, the Mercedes, didn't mean anything, it wouldn't mean anything, or Seiko, or Ruger, or uh, Winchester, or whatever, right? So it, those names begin to have meaning because of the quality they represent or the lack of quality they represent. It's just kind of what it is. So yeah, we are sort of paying for the name. The question is, is it worth it that much though? Is it worth that much? Okay. Well, let's, let's look at what you kind of get in a $400 rifle versus a couple thousand. And these are just samples. These are just uh, samples I happen to have. And that's why, well, I say happen to have. We, we had this because I love this rifle. And I've, <laughs> I've mentioned that in the Sunday shoot around in the video first video with and I'll link to that how I've uh, uh, picked these things up at SHOT Show or NRA meeting and I think oh this gun fits me like a glove you know and uh, and I, I finally got one from Bud's and there's more to that story too so that's why I have it that was intentional and then but well, we, ought, we ought to compare this with a less expensive uh, rifle uh, that's very popular and so I ordered this one from Bud's to, uh, on loan, you know, as, as this one is on loan. And so that's why we're here and that's what we're doing. So let's jump right in. Okay, what is the difference? Well, when you look at them, now pretend the scope is not on that, okay? You, you don't, you're not really looking at a scope. It doesn't, <laughs> the thing that hit me, I thought, well, I want to get the uh, cheap, you know, inexpensive Ruger American uh, because they run about 400, you know, a little bit more. Uh, but I can't shoot it. I can't shoot that $400 rifle. So, hence, that's one of the differences. 
if I order one of these, because you know most websites and gun shops have have these, but they don't have a scope on them. Most of them, some do. This came with a scope, uh, or I ordered the one with a scope. So that's one of the differences, maybe. Now some really expensive rifles might not have a, a sights either, metal sights. But the Ruger American is probably not going to have metal sights. Okay, so that's one way they keep the cost down. There's no no sights on it, okay? Like this one, it has really nice sights. In fact, I, I, I wouldn't even put a scope on this if it were mine. So you get really nice sights, they're adjustable, they're on the barrel, okay? And I always like that, okay? So it's nice to have metal sights. Even if you do put a scope on there, you got backup sights, right? Just like on an AR-15. So you get, you're more likely to get sights, metal sights, on a uh, or more expensive rifle that's one of the differences it's one way to cut cost it's one reason a lot of rifles don't come with any sorts of uh no sights yeah that's just a uh, fact of life these days in terms of cutting expenses now another obvious difference we're going to go through the obvious concrete differences and i'll have to tell you there's a little bit of difference between the stock on these two rifles right just a little bit yeah and i'm sure you've already seen the beauty in this seiko okay this is the bavarian model scope i mean look at that i mean it looks like something i would carve hand carve doesn't it uh just a gorgeous piece of wood and as i said when you bring that thing up most people unless i think you're kind of short maybe uh i don't know you need to be a little bit taller i don't know because it feels so good to me and john just fits like a glove has a long plenty long length of pull and it's a beautiful piece of wood look at that four in and all that that's just uh that is gorgeous the checkering and it's what you get you know it's uh now does any of that make it shoot better not necessarily that has a little swell right there so what well, thing is chiseled out beautifully just it's just really nice the fit and the finish Actually, are you ready for this? This is me. This is my John, the comedian. I really like the finish finish on this. That's hilarious, wasn't it? It is made in Finland, okay? Did you get it? Relatives in Kentucky, did you get that? Yeah, finish finish. It's got a finish finish on it. Okay, just make sure you got it. Uh, so, yeah, the uh, the stock, I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it, you know, I love the way it's finished. <laughs> Speaking of finish, you know, it's kind of the satin and just absolutely gorgeous i mean it doesn't quite match this beautiful polymer <laughs> but you know the problem with it too though by the time they they spent the time on this uh, stock and the finish the finish finish getting it beautiful uh, they couldn't afford to put stickers on it like ruger did so you have to buy those cost extra if you want a seiko sticker on the stock on these i think i think that's the way that works okay they're extra extra expense what else or the trigger you're going to get a good really good trigger generally on a very expensive rifle like this and it has a beautiful trigger now ruger has a really nice trigger too and ruger the ruger american is not necessarily representative of every inexpensive rifle because one thing which i hadn't mentioned yet is and many of you know this better than i do because i don't really hunt but Bolt action rifles have come a long way in the last 10 to 20 years. You know, Savage, Ruger, various companies, uh, and they have really nice triggers. This has a very nice trigger on it for an inexpensive rifle. Uh, you read anything you want on the Ruger America and some of the Savage rifles and that, both accuracy and the trigger uh, have have uh, moved forward leaps and bounds in the last uh, couple of decades. And for a very reasonable amount of money, you get a really nice trigger. So, so in some ways, you know, it's not night and day like it used to be. Now, in the old days, it was uh, there was far more difference there. So we want to be fair to, to the Ruger on that. Now, this one does have the set trigger, and that's something that you know you're not necessarily going to get, you know, uh, on an inexpensive rifle. When you cock it, and you, you just push forward on it, it, it just uses the one trigger for that. And you saw in the first video with this rifle that, oh man, I'm not gonna pull it, but it, you breathe on it, it shoots, okay? So really, really nice trigger. And you got, even without the set, you've got a nice trigger, nice break, and then the set trigger is extremely light. All right, so that's, I would still say it's an advantage, okay? Although this baby has a nice trigger. 
Yeah, can we put a little more ammo in them? Yeah, let's do that. Let's just put a little more ammo as I'm talking. Uh, they both, uh, you, know, you got polymer, that's the thing. You get polymer when you're going for uh, kind of a bargain situation. And uh, this one comes, I finally figured out how to get this out. You push on the, you push down on the mag. <laughs> We've been trying to force it. All you do is put a little pressure on that and it comes right out. You do get a metal magazine, you know, again, because of, uh, you know, again, it's more expensive. I get the right caliber in here, the right ammo. Use the right ammo. I think I know some guys that did a video called that. Use the right ammo. 270. This Seiko is a 270. So you got a metal magazine. Is that better than a polymer magazine? Oh, I don't know. Glock seems to do pretty well with a polymer magazine, right? Although there's metal in it. Uh, you know it worked Glock in somehow, didn't you? So, uh, you know, you get a metal magazine, bolts back. And here you get a polymer magazine, but it sends where it holds four. All right. So as uh, everybody has learned over the years, of course, if something's made of polymer, plastic. Some of you would call it who hate polymer. <laughs> uh, you know, it's going to be less expensive. It's just that simple. But uh, the one thing I can't talk about. Uh, well, I can't talk about anything like an expert. But I don't really like to bench rest stuff and and it just go to incredible lengths to to test groups at various different ranges and all that sort of thing. But I've read enough on well both these rifles, and you probably know too if you're into these these kinds of rifles, which ones are accurate, which ones have a reputation for being accurate, and which ones don't. Well, the Seiko definitely has a reputation for being accurate. I'm talking inherent accuracy, and of course because of the ergonomics of it it enhances that because it just fits like a glove right and the ruger american has a really uh strong reputation for being accurate even though it may not be a beautiful seiko or weatherby or whatever you want to name uh these rifles have established themselves as just one heck of a rifle okay so i'm not here to bash the ruger american or the savage or any of these this new generation of uh, bolt action hunting rifles you know just kind of pointing out some of the differences what you do get uh, on the more expensive ones or what you don't get on the less expensive ones okay and then you decide whether you rob a bank to buy <laughs> one of them or not so yeah this uh, uh this came with a scope like i say i think this runs around six i don't know something six and a half maybe with with this particular scope uh, but I just needed to have sights on it so I could shoot it. So the only reason I got one with a scope. Uh, so I guess I could have just gotten the rail and stuck something on there. I don't know. But uh, uh, but the rifle itself, without the scope, you're talking $400. You get a hunting rifle, and then it's up to you what you do after that. Okay. All right, let's take a couple more shots with it. There's a uh, two-liter over there. Maybe I can hit it. <laughs> Let's hit that little red plate on the left. Now one more bullet. Let's just shoot the gong. What the heck? <laughs> All right. The Ruger American. Uh, it's a well-established, fine rifle, and uh, can't mix them up because it has Ruger on there, right? So uh, you get a uh, you get a three lug bolt on this thing. You get more of a push feed with this one, where you get a controlled feed with this one, okay? So, let me shoot it. You are supposed to be able to, with this rifle, kind of like a Mauser, you can be sideways or upside down, hanging from a tree or whatever, on the run, and still, you know, get that, have control of the round. What else do I want to shoot? Uh, let's put one in this watermelon before we uh, run out of uh, ammo. <laughs> I hope y'all can see that's a watermelon plant growing right there, by the way. And I don't know who planted it or how it got there, but we'll figure it out one day. Let's put one on the target. We haven't done that yet. Oh, yeah. You know what else I haven't done? i got to smoke one pot, all right? At least do that. Get a, give me a bullet. Give me a bullet. That's the wrong one. 
I shouldn't have laid that there. Yeah. 270. There we go. Didn't get a lot of smoke, but I just didn't want to not do that. All right. Uh, so, ah, watermelon. I just had to do that, didn't I? I ain't a mess. So there's some of the concrete you know, differences I've talked about. Uh, now, with, also with this gun, not that it makes a difference. Some of the things, maybe none of them really make that much difference in terms of, of course, function. If you were an avid hunter, you, or you just want a hunting rifle, a new one, uh, you would probably take just as much game with this one as you would this, right? Uh, but you, another thing that I was going to point out, the bolt on this one is one piece of steel. It's made from one piece of steel, even the handle. Isn't that amazing? Uh, it looks like there's a joint there, but there's not. So the handle and everything is just one, one piece milled out. And so, yeah, it's just one of those differences. Maybe nothing that's uh, essential. The other thing, as I pointed out in the Seiko video, when you work the action on this thing, it, it feels like a million bucks. It just, it just uh, talk about precision. It's just amazing the feel of this, this, this gun. Uh, so, yeah, it, uh, it ain't cheap. It runs around, you know, 2K. Now, I know the concept I like to bring up in these, these sorts of videos is just because this firearm is maybe four times as much money doesn't mean it's four times as good, right? It, uh, it, it y'all know the the principles of building things, and uh, if you've got any age on you and you've bought a few different things, whether it's cars or watches or shoes or anything, tires, whatever it might be, something in order to make something, and I'm just throwing out numbers, but in order to make something 10% better or 20% better, it might take twice as much money, okay, uh, to make it four times. As it, or, or this is four times as expensive, doesn't mean it's four times as good. It might not even be twice as, as good, whatever that means, however we interpret that, twice as effective, uh, durable even maybe, I don't know. So we all are aware of that, right? You Sometimes you have to pay a lot more to get something that's a little better. It's just the way manufacturing goes, there's more handwork, it can be very expensive. A Smith & Wesson 686 would probably shoot just as well uh, for about anybody and last as long or longer than a Colt Python. Talking about an old Python or a new one, but an old Python. Uh, and the Python, what, cost twice as much off the shelf probably when they're new or, or more. Uh, it just took, takes a lot of money to get that polishing, to do the, the tweaking and the, the things that the, they did to the Python. Yeah, a lot of hand work and that kind of thing, which is very expensive, okay? Doesn't mean it, if it costs three times as much, for example, that it's three times better. It's just it's the way the economies of scale, you know, work. So anyway, pretty nice rifle. Now, a couple of things too, maybe more theoretical. Uh, Seiko has a rep, you're paying for the reputation. It's made in Finland. They have a, a reputation of making really fine rifles, right? Uh, you're paying partly for the ergonomics, the looks. I mean, like I said, when you pick this thing up, it feels like a million bucks. When you pick this rifle up, it doesn't feel like a million bucks. It just feels like something that's probably going to work, though, kind of like a Glock, you know, a Glock or something. Uh, but it, it just doesn't, you don't get that same feel at all, all right? So that kind of falls under ergonomics. Like I said, accuracy, probably not enough difference for you to notice that, that would make a big difference in your life you shooting now you people that do bench rest shooting and you are you're uh that's that's most of what you do when you go to the range you put it on a bench and you're shooting at paper targets and uh, you do that with every rifle you shoot chime in i don't do that i don't enjoy that some of you do and uh which of these rifles would you know just from your experience if you and you don't if you don't have an agenda you know or whatever the dog in the fight you know would you expect to get uh, better accuracy out of if you uh, put a scope on both of them, put them both on a bench, locked them into a vise or whatever, and took some shots at 100 yards. Do you think there would be enough difference with the same ammo, basically same quality ammo? Do you? Do you I'm asking too. I'm not. This is not a rhetorical question or or like an accusatory question. 
uh, loaded question. I just really, what would your opinion be? Do you think that there would be a significant difference between the two? Because what I'm hearing is the Ruger American just surprises a lot of people on accuracy. The, they're riflemen. And, uh, and, and I know these are supposed to be accurate, but they may not be any more accurate, uh, inherently more accurate than, you know, the Ruger American. So there you go. So you got a push feed, you got a controlled feed, you've got a mechanical ejector on this thing. It's right down there. There's a groove in the bottom of the bolt. It's supposed to be really uh, secure and ejects that round no matter what's going on. If you got a Cape Buffalo charging you, you know, things like that. So those little things like that might, might make a difference. Uh, and, and again, of course, you have the pride of ownership. You know, maybe uh, hunting is a big thing with you and you, you don't mind, like most of us, we don't mind if it's something we really like, if it's golf, you know, we want some really good clubs. So we can't blame our inadequacies on the clubs. We know we've taken care of the clubs. We've got some of the best clubs. Same clubs Tiger would use or whoever, you know. So I can't blame it on them now. So it's up to me. i got to practice, okay? Some of us are like that with firearms. We just, we just want a really nice firearm. We know it'll work. It's going to be durable. It's going to be accurate. And then we'll go from there. And... Uh, and it doesn't mean you're rich if you buy a, a firearm like this. A lot of people uh, with average incomes, they just, they just, uh, they strive to save money to buy something they really like, like a car, you know? Think about how many people are driving really expensive cars around. It's not because they're rich. They just really like to have a nice car and they save up for that. And that's where they put their money. And so you might be the same way with with a hunting rifle. You just want a really nice hunting rifle or a skeet gun. That's just your thing. That's what you do. It's where you put your money. You don't have a bass boat. You don't have a lot of other hobbies. And you just want to, by golly, you want a Seiko, you know, to deer hunt with or whatever it is you do. And you know you don't need it. You know this one would do probably the same thing, but you just like one of these. So anyway, getting a little bit wordy. I think uh, probably the other differences might be things like, uh, I don't know, the Probably the, the steel, this probably has a cast receiver, I think. Uh, doesn't make a big difference. Uh, I understand the barrel's put on with a barrel nut. Uh, Ruger kind of pioneered that, I think, on bolt action rifles. You got push feed, uh, cold hammer forged barrel, you know, a nice accurate barrel. And I can't think of any other, you know, big, big differences. Uh, you'll mention, I've got adjustable sights on this, by the way, you know, so. Uh, as far as the sights that do come on it. And I know that's a bugaboo with some people that buy a, a nice rifle or any kind of hunting rifle and there's no sights on it. They have no sights, let's say, have them put on, you get them to put on. So, 400 bucks versus uh, 2,000. Uh, just an example, I've got my Model 70 out here. You know, this would be another rifle. A new Model 70 Winchester, oh, well, they run about 1,500. This one's a little higher because it's a vintage, it's pre-64. Same deal, you got a really nice rifle. You can tell by the feel of it, uh, the ergonomics and everything. And there are a lot of really nice rifles, Browning and different companies with beautiful wood that uh, made well that you could uh, do this comparison with, okay? So I'll wrap it up. This rifle will do whatever you probably need for a hunting rifle to do. And it's just that uh, this one or that one will do it in a prettier fashion i guess you need to say so depends on what's important to you uh both will get it done and uh, just like that hyundai or that kia will get you where you need to go on the road but uh sometimes we uh just you know we feel like we want something that looks a little better uh maybe has a better reputation or we just like it just the way we are, isn't it? So four hundred dollars will buy that rifle without the scope. Uh, a mere two thousand will buy this one, and they'll both do the same thing, right? So I'll let you go. I just thought I'd uh, point that out, and uh, feel free to to add to this because those of you who shoot bolt actions a lot, like I said, bench rest them, you hunt with them a lot. Uh, I know you've got some valuable input. Okay, on, on both of these rifles, no doubt about it. Life is good. Uh, it's a long walk from where I had to shoot that.
Oh, man. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. TalonGunGrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips. So go check them out. Also, Ballastall. They're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water soluble and non-toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So Ballastall, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45. And also, I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J O H N underscore H I C K O K 4 5 on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.